This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Um, I am Peter Van Alphen, for those of you who haven't met me, Chief Curator here at the ANS, and it is my great pleasure to introduce today um, Al Mawawit El Shahawi, who is a graduate student in conservation at Cairo University at the moment. I, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. El Shahawi a number of years ago. Um, when I was in Cairo for a conference. And in the meantime, he's done an internship at the Getty out in California and uh, has continued with his PhD studies. Um, he is a conservationist by training and um, hoping to become a professional conservationist. In fact, he pretty much already is. Um, he works on a lot of metallic objects, um, not just coins, but other objects as well. And this uh, is something that is actually really quite dear to my heart. Years ago, when I was an archaeologist in training at Texas A&M University in the nautical archaeology program, uh, we were required to take a year of conservation, um, doing uh, conservation on artifacts recovered from underwater. And I have to say that um, conserving metals of any sort is one of the most difficult types of conservation, just because a lot of them are very reactive, especially the copper alloys. And, and of course, as those those of you who collect and have worked with copper coins or copper alloy coins certainly know, you know just how um, uh, you know how uh, corroded they can they can be. So, with that, I'm more than happy to turn it over to you now. I don't know why it's better. <clears throat> I think you're you're muted still. All right, I think you're you're still. Oh, there you go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep, there you go. All right. Uh, thank you so much for uh, this introduction. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank ENS for giving me the opportunity to be with all of you today. Our long table lecture about conservation and the treatment of ancient coinage, focusing on bronze coins. And I will be happy to give another long table lecture about conservation of ancient silver coins. The study and conservation of ancient coins can provide us with lots of significant information, including but not limited to acquiring accurate data for the region, economic, social, and the political condition about the region and period, industry information and location of mining, information about fashion, textiles, foreigners, ancient religion and developments, particularly on Islamic coinage. And we conserve the coins for long-term preservation. Deterioration factors and corrosion products, the most common problem affecting, affecting conservation of metal is corrosion. It's an accelerated process. Definition of corrosion, metal back to the raw material by acting with environmental. This figure explain how the corrosion process happen. The element is in a stable state in nature and while extracting the element from its raw materials using a certain energy. And at this point, the metal has tranched transitioned from a staple to an active state. The metal attempts to return to its original state in nature by creating corrosion products that are identical to the raw materials. So we must determine if the corrosion is desirable, undesirable, or dangerous. The schematic figure of typical corrosion product of bronze coins. Here you can see the metal core, the oxide layers, and carbonates. And in a high relative humidity, active corrosion will be formed. 
and we'll discuss active corrosion in more detail later. Corrosion types. Different types of corrosion according to the composition of alloy, the manufacturing technique, for example, the striking process of bronze coins often leads to cracks, particularly on the edges. Natural of surrounding environment. The nature of corrosion are impervious. There is no corrosion since metal doesn't react with electrolyte. Metal is said to be stable, active, Metal reacts with its environment, forming corrosion products on the surface. Passive metal has reacted with the environment and corrosion products have formed a protective film on the surface, reducing the corrosion rate. For the active corrosion, this type of corrosion more, uh, is most common on archaeological copper alloys and is known as bronze disease. It takes place when chlorides react with bronze or other alloys containing cup and occurs where the RH is high, above 55%. The corrosion reaction is progressive and may rapidly cause extensive damage which means that the metal is not protected and is constantly corroding, leading to severe damage. And it depends on oxygen, water, and pH. The transport of chloride from a contaminated coin to other coins could spur this type of corrosion. The aspects of active corrosion are all signs that the material is suffering from bronze disease are cracks, deep holes, and powdery and light green spots. Electrochemical or galvanic corrosion. The similar metal and alloys have a different electrode potentials. And when two different metals are in contact for a long time and an electrolyte is formed by the action of dampness of mineral salts or impurities, an electrical current will circulate and the less noble metal will be corroded, while the more noble will be preserved. And it may cover by residues of the other metals corrosion. In the, in the case of plated coins with different compositions for the core and the outer layer, for instance, copper lined with silver as in Roman coins, an electrolytic process could occur between the inner and the outer parts of the same coin, leading to destruction of the core. As a result, Avoid storing coins of different metals side by side in the same drawer or same showcase as much as possible. In this table, a typical or most of corrosion products of copper and its alloys. Die deterioration, cutting of ancient dyes used to be done by hand, which was a time consuming process and dyes were not unnecessarily discarded while still useful. As a result, they were rarely replaced as a peer. It's common to see coins struck from one fresh and one deteriorated dye. Coins, coin dyes deteriorate at different rates and in different ways. Low dye pressure, improper preparation and treatment process of the dyes, such as annealing and cold working, excessive wear and overuse, such as overstrike or double strike. Conservation procedures. It's divided into multiple steps. 
the goal of conservation, as I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, we do conserve the ancient, the ancient coins for a long, long term of preservation, reading the writing and finding fine details and pattern for numismatists, documentation and condition report. We should make a condition report on the coins that we are working on. The condition reports include ID number, material, provenance, location, picture of the coins for the obverse and reverse. Analysis and investigation. The ideal way to learn about the coins is to conduct research and analysis to answer questions about the material, manufacturing techniques, and deteriorating aspects in order to devise the best conservation plan for the coins treatment. For the cleaning procedures, this include mechanical, chemical, electrochemical, ultrasonic, plasma, and laser techniques. Another step, stabilization if necessary, protection, isolation, by applying coatings or inhibitors, or you can apply both to make an extra protection, depends on the preservation state of the coin. And the last step is display, storage, and rehousing. In this figure, a condition report includes a picture of the coins, obverse and reverse, the coin number, material, dimension, access, description of the preservation condition, corrosion products, in addition to the treatment proposal. In this table, a simple database of coins includes ID number, container, title, current location, date, material, weight, dimension, access, description, and surface condition. Coin photography in action. The ideal way to photograph your coins is to use a copy stand so that there is no shaking and the camera is vertical on the coin. In terms of lighting, we can use one source of light from a 45 uh, degree, but I like to utilize two sources of light from two angles, 45 degree. ENS actually has an amazing setup of the coin photography. These images show documentation, measurements of dimensions, axes, and weights of the coins. Drawing and documentation of the uh, coins for the decorations and writings can be done in a, vari uh, a variety of ways, including freehand drawing, computer software, such as Photoshop, AutoCAD, 3D Max, and Illustrator. Another method, known uh, as RTI, can use to investigate and photograph of coins to reveal surface information that is not disclosed under direct uh, empirical examination of the physical object. This technique, depending on taking a number of images with light sources at fixed location, various views of a Roman coin at the conservation center of the Grand Egyptian Museum. If you want to read more the information and to learn more about this technique, please visit this page using this link. Scientific investigation and analysis. This done by using microscopes and magnifiers to obtain clear details of the coin surface. 
the aim of investigation and analysis to know the natural, the nature of metal and its alloys, identification, the elemental composition of alloy, and also support the work for, of archaeologists. Characterizing and identifying the external surface, nature of corrosion products, identify the best conservation approach as necessary, help and determine the authenticity. Examination with digital microscope. In these pictures, you, we can see active corrosion uh, spots, mint mark, and topographic relief of eagle and letters. Here we can see central cavities filled with corrosion products. And this example, one of my favorite coins I have ever worked on, we can see the corrosion layer, which looks like leaves and actually, unfor unfortunately, I wasn't able to conduct any investigation to figure out what the corrosion product is. Here we can see cracks on coin and soil deposition. Optical microscope. Through examination using the optical microscope, it helps in answering similar questions, particularly on condition assessment and manufacturing techniques, such as, is the coin fragile? Is it intact or fragmented? Is there any active corrosion? Is there remnant metal? Is there foreign materials such as plant materials, textile, sodomorphs, slag, and so on? Is there tool marks? And this actually helps in authenticity as well. Is there error in manufacturing? X-ray radiography. This method, it's very important when you are studying ancient materials. It's non-destructive method. It's preferable to conduct it once coins detected, helps to determine the shape of coins, to determine the outlines, even under thick corrosion layers, reveal fine details, even with mineralized, determine if they're remnant metal, information and observation through radiograph, determine the manufacturing techniques, casting or striking, determine is there inscriptions in lay or gilding. We can also know if, it, if there are cracks, corrosion products, damage and loss. Metallography examination, microstructure. Through the met metallographic examination, it is possible to obtain information related to manufacturing technique, for example, for casting process, it appears dendritic shape or striking method, it appears twinning shape. We can also learn more about nature of metal or alloy. We can also get more details about uh, treatment, thermal history of the object, for example, annealing, nature of corrosion, fitting or layer, the information about corrosion and its colors. Scanning electron microscope 
Through using a scanning electron microscope, we can obtain information about the surface topography and the composition of the sample. Analysis methods. In archaeology field, we are always looking for the use of non-destructive analysis. There are many different methods of analysis. The required analysis is determined according to specific points. For example, analysis regard, regards to the elemental composition. And this, you can use methods like XRF, X-ray fluorescence, scanning electron microscope with EDX, ICP, and there are also analysis regards to the identification of corrosion compounds, such as using X-ray diffraction and FTIR. In this figure, you can see the advantages and disadvantages of ICB and XRF in analysis studies. Handheld XRF analysis. XRF actually is a surface analysis. So if you are going to make analysis for some coins to know information about the elemental composition of this coin, you have, and, and these coins actually covering with uh, corrosion products. So first, you should remove the corrosion layer before performing the XRF analysis to get more precise results. The elemental components of some ectolomic bronze coins stored in uh, the Getty Villa Museum were determined using a portable X-ray fluorescence analysis was performed with a handheld broker tracer spectrometer, 40 kV high voltage, 20 current, anode current, and for 40 seconds lifetime radiation. Spectra were interpreted using R RTEX software, the analytical results and the spots location are listed in this table. Results showed points were made from a lead bronze alloy. Copper is the main element with a high amount of lead and variable traces of tin and iron. Conservation processes. The act of conservation strives to prevent and reduce the deterioration rate of the object, as well as protecting the object for future use. We have to have a good awareness when we plan to do a treatment of ancient coins. This awareness will influence the, the way such coins are approached. The goal of conservation procedures are remove corrosion products if they are active or destructive. One should not remove protective or stable corrosion products, identifying fine details and making them legible for numismatists and planning for long-term preservation. Make a decision. Before you make a decision for, clean, for cleaning the coins you work on, first, you have to answer these questions to make sure that you will get a good results after cleaning process. Don't clean them like improper, 
cleaning reduce significantly their value? How many corrosion layers are there? What might the corrosion layers be? This will differ depending on coin composition. And which layer or layers is the original surface detail per serve? On metal core layers, on cuprite, or in malachite, carbonate layer, and so on. Here, some of uh, some examples of coins in various preservation conditions that require careful consideration when deciding whether or not to treat them. From left to the right, the first two coins require necessity treatment due to active corrosion that have damaged them. The third and the fourth should be treated because the corrosion products appear to be unstable and cover the original surface of the coins that might contain writings and descriptions. From coins five to eight, they appear to be in good preservation condition and stable. And we can see and understand the inscriptions and calligraphy on the surface of the coins. So they don't require any treatment or cleaning. All we have to do now is set them up with environmental control. Let's look at an example of a silver coin, number nine. In this case, the coin doesn't require cleaning because it appears to be stable and the inscription can be read without any treatment. Things should be considered before coins cleaning. You have to work under microscope. You have to start in a small area. You have to work on the edge in a small circular motions. You have to start gently to remove the dirt. Go slow, there is no hurry. And in this picture, a group of coins that can explain for us what are the coins look like before treatment? Cleaning procedures. Cleaning is a basic procedure in conservation. Cleaning is a very critical process because of its irreversibility. It can result in irreversible damage to the coins if not done correctly. Different cleaning procedures are available based on the chemical, physical, and structure characteristics of the material to be removed. The extent to which any coin cleaning technique will be successful is determined by, determined by the time taking, the resources required, and the final outcomes in relation to the intended purpose for which cleaning has been perfor performed. So let's say that the coins needs to be clean. Here are the cleaning procedures that can use for coin cleaning. Mechanical cleaning, chemical cleaning, mixing technique, mechanical plus chemical and electrochemical cleaning. Mechanical cleaning treatment are accomplished carefully using different mechanical tools. Physically removing deposit includes using pressure, for example, cleaning by pressurized water, 
and oppression using compressed gases and or radiation, for example, using ultrasonic generators and laser ablation. During the mechanical cleaning process, consider using a magnifying tool like microscope, magnifying glass. This will allow you to see the coin and the details better. Make sure you have good lighting when cleaning the coins. Dry cleaning methods are usually excluded if the material is in an advanced state of deterioration. These are some of the tools that can be used in the mechanical cleaning of coin. Soft brushes, thumb skewers, and scalpels and fiber glasses pen enables easy remove of lime residue and incrustations as in the case of a small chisel. Carefully not to scratch the surface and without damaging the coin. Ultrasonic pen, one of my favorite tools that I use it for cleaning ancient coins. Make sure the coins has no cracks and not thin. It's a small and light design, digitally controlled, easy operation and more efficient for scaling. Ultrasonic bath, cleaner with water only. At some cases, actually, you can add it some chemical material with low concentration during using ultrasonic bath. But in general, you have to use it with distilled water only. For micro motor, this device, you can use it with various pits, avoid scratches and waves. The micro motor machine can also be used to remove corrosion products of coin surfaces and the speed is adjustable. These pictures showing the mechanical cleaning process for some ancient coins at the Grand Egyptian Museum using various mechanical cleaning tools under microscope. Cleaning and other process. The cleaning procedures is acceptable. Tuning and coloring are not acceptable since they are considered a counter, counterfeit process of coins. For plasma and laser cleaning, they requires actually training. Uh, laser cleaning is a selective and non-contact method that can lead to better preservation of the surface details, laser cleaning offer advantages over traditional cleaning offer, traditional cleaning methods involving chemical or mechanical action. This includes non-contact energy is delivered in the form of light, low environmental impact, no hazardous chemical, or solvent and the process generates very small quantities of waste material. Selectivity can be tuned to intact with specific substance, localized action, cleans only where directed. Vers versatility, in some cases, the availability of radiation at other wavelengths can increase the flexibility, preservation of surface relief 
sensitive enough to preserve fine detail, control, removal. A specific thickness of material can be removed and the laser and the plasma can be stopped immediate, immediately. Removal of the crust is well controlled and can be carried out layer, layer by layer. The advantage of pulse laser cleaning, its ability is ability to remove the surface contamination layer by layer and selectively. The disadvantages of using plasma and laser, this, these eff effects are generally microscopic and only visible at high magnification, make color a change and cause a melting point at the clean area. Actually, you can't see this melting point by eyes. You have to use magnification, for example, using scanning electron microscope to use to see uh, this melting point. And actually, this one way when we are evaluating or making assessment of laser and plasma techniques during the cleaning process. I'm giving these examples of using laser and plasma in coin cleaning for the purpose of demonstrating the results of cleaning process using these techniques. And please on the results of this example, if I have to choose, actually just on this example, if I have to choose one method for cleaning ancient coins, I would choose plasma. If you can look here, you can see the, the comparative between cleaning by using plasma and here's before the reference area and actually in conservation and the field of archaeology, we don't clean coins for to make the coins very shiny or to make the coins very beautiful. Just we have to preserve the coins and keep the coins away from deterioration, not to make the coins very beautiful or very shiny. So you have to make sure first which kind of coins that you're working on. So if you are working on coins like this, it's modern coin. It will be different when you are working on coins belongs to 3000 years ago. So you have to make sure to be careful when you are doing cleaning process for ancient coins. If uh, conservation, if the coin is in a poor condition, we can do the cleaning process directly because this might goes, cause further damage to the coin. So we must start with a temporary consolidation for the weak parts by searing pepit or brushes using paraloid B44 or B72, 5% in acetone, then we can continue with the cleaning process. Chemical cleaning treatment. One of the pieces of conservation is reversibility. Any process that is performed for preserving a coin must be able to be undone with as minimal damage as possible to the coin itself. 
chemical cleaning is irreversible. This is why it must be the last choice that is only used when absolutely necessary. Chemical nature of the object, degree of deterioration, type of materials to be removed, and the chemical nature of the object or coins, degree of deterioration, type of materials to be removed, all of these should be taken into account when you are going to use a chemical cleaning for treatment your coins. When you decide to undertake a chemical cleaning for ancient coins, you must take many cautionary measures into account. Use low uh, concentration, stop before reaching the original surface and metal core, do a temporary protection for the affected original surface. If you want to continue using chemicals, renew temporary protection if you clean the surface of your coin with ethanol or mechanically, don't use ammonia, hydrochloric acid, or commercial polish cream as mirror. Never leave your coin in chemical bath without supervision or for a night. Check the pH of the last bath of the last bath on the surface of your coin at the end after finishing the chemical cleaning process. You have to rinse and dry your coins. These pictures, here you can see the different methods of applying chemical treatment on coins by poultice, gel, and bath or immersion. Immersion. Chemical cleaning, the use of different chemical cleaning materials it depends on the types of corrosion products that the coins contain, as shown, is, uh, as shown in this table. So it depends on the deterioration aspects and, and corrosion you have on the surface of your coins, you can choose the appropriate materials to remove this corrosion or deposits. So for the mass treatment, if you are working with a large quantity of coins, such as hoard of coins, and you have a limit time to be done with this project. So you will need to do a mass treatment for them all at once with a certain measure, you have to make a global condition report for, for the whole hoard working with a chemical in large container or box. I check coins one by one and gently brush them, only quick mechanical cleaning at the end, thorough rinsing finally you will probably no need to protect your coins by applying a coating or storing them rinsing the chemical treatment after completing the chemical cleaning process of the coins we must rinse them to ensure that no chemical residue residue remains on the surface of the coins and to restore the pH of the coins to a neut neutral scale. Because we applied or we had used an alkaline or acidic material that caused a change in the pH of the coins, as well as to ensure 
that we are finished with the treatment of the coins by checking the pH and you have to find in this case your the pH of the coins at seven degree. Minimum, you have to rinse your coins three times the duration of the in, in, in social chemical bath, ideally three times each one hour minimum, you check the pH of the last bath on the surface of your coin, rinsing between two different chemical baths. Drying, after finishing the coin rinsing procedure, we must dry the coin to eliminate any water that may have remained on the surface as a result of the rinsing process and to prepare the coins for applying coating materials if necessary. This by immerse your coin in acetone bath and this for quick drying carefully carefully use hair dryer or air gun maximum from three to five minutes. You can also, as you can see here in these photos, you can put your coins in oven between 40 to 60 uh, degree Celsius for minimum of two hours to a maximum 24 hours. Dry your coin at the end of each day, even if the conservation treatment is not complete. Active corrosion test. Testing for chlorides carried out by taking a sample of active corrosion with a needle and scalpel, dissolving it with nitric acid and adding silver nitrate solution the presence of a white cloudy precipitate indicates a positive for chloride. General stabilization, you have to done this process under vacuum bath of stabilization using BTA, 3% in ethanol during two days maximum. And actually, to be honest, benzotriazole now, almost all of conservation institutions around the world doesn't use it anymore because of the toxicity. So all of these are almost all of these institutions going to use green materials for stabilization or for active corrosion treatment. We can also done local stabilization after removing corrosion in pitted areas, applying silver oxide mixed with ethanol to seal pits. You can also make a gel from carboxymethyl cellulose, 8% in distal water, plus drops of ethanol. Overall, the surface of the coin, wrap the coin in aluminum foil, as you can see here in these pictures. After 30 minutes, I check if tiny holes appear in aluminum, rinse and brush your coin. The treatments for bronze DCs have been changing fre frequently as more information on the related chemical process are discovered and tested. As mentioned above, bronze DCs is a cyclical chemical process in which the corrosion process are accelerated as the object is introduced to moisture and oxygen. So 
the stabilization of bronze artifacts or bronze coins before they are exposed to the disease is crucial. Bronze disease can be controlled through surface treatments and cleaning such as using zinc oxide, silver oxide, aluminum oxide, along with subsequent mechanical cleaning for the most efficient removal of chlorides. The most effective way to compact bronze disease is by controlling the relative humidity in an object environment between 35 to 40%. You can see here in the table, it's a little bit complicated, but actually it's very useful if you are going to use some of these methods when you are going to cleaning your coins. This comparison of the properties, advantages and disadvantages of cleaning techniques for ancient coins. The tools, equipment, and materials that can use with different cleaning techniques for ancient coins is presented in this table. For join, if you have some coins or coin that broken, you can detach it sections with paraloid B44, 50% in acetone. You can also, if you have a gaps or loss, you can fill these gaps with glass microballon with paraloid B44, 40% in acetone filled with silica powder and colored by pigments retouching, retouch the completion part with paraloid P44, 5% in acetone and colored with pigments or acrylic paints. And actually for the retouch, you have to make a different color between the completion part and the original surface of the coins for the isolation and protection and protection after complete drying and coating one side using paraloid B44 10% in acetone by brush you have to wait 10 minutes to 20 minutes before coating other side micro crystalline wax 10% in white spirits and actually for micro crystalline wax, you have to make sure that the surface of your coins is uh, smooth, not have any lower and higher parts because if you, when you are using the micro crystalline wax, the wax will go in this tiny holes. So you have to make sure that the coins you are working on very smooth and very straight. Here's, we can see a group of coins before and after treatment. After finishing the cleaning procedures and applying coating we must wait three hours after coating to bag the coins. Here in Egypt at the Grand Egyptian Museum, we are using a simple ways. Actually, it's not the best, but the materials that we have. And also around the world, we have to look at the cost of the materials that you are using for conservation of ancient coins or packing 
or storage material. So we are using a carton board acid free. So after finishing the cleaning procedures and applying coating, we must wait three hours after coating to bag the coins. Never label the ID number directly on coins. You can put a piece of paper with the coins number and identification inside the bag, like using poly polyethylene or write the coins number directly on the bag from the outside. Polyethylene or polypropylene, individual box or tray, if they will not be stored in climate control, put many grab bags in box with dry silk gel and seal well with uh, archival tape all around the box. Actually, I have just to mention these coins come from other institution to display or stores to the new museum uh, in Cairo. Uh, after you are done with the conservation of uh, ancient coins, you have to make a treatment report including the old procedures and everything done during the conservation of coins, of coins process. Coins displaying the iPads at the Giddy Villa Museum exhibition. We can zoom in on coins details and see what's on the flip side or other side. This display scenario is really attractive and it is based on the usage of coins of various materials in a single display case. But from the point of view of conservation, I advise or we advise to do not this in your collection. For cataloging coins or labels, here are some simple models for displaying labels for ancient coins that are created. This model actually from the Kuwait National Museum, although this dinar is not authentic, but the label is good, simple, and the gov covers all the information. Recommendations and conclusions when cleaning ancient coins, be caution and patient, patient cleaning Ancient coins mechanically is the most effective method. Chemical cleaning should be avoided as much as possible and ammonia solution should be avoided during the coin treatment processing. Keep track of all the actions and details that we are taking and forward. When treating ancient coin with plasma must begin with gently cleaning assess the results and then decide whether to continue or stop stop immediately when reaching the original surface of the archaeological coins the use of laser beam to clean coins is not recommended since the laser impulse affects the coin surface by melting it locally coating is really rarely required to of properly cleaned and cor correctly preserved coins when the preservation environment contains chemicals that damage that the metals of coins or when coins have been cleaned with a destructive approach stabilizing may appear to be necessary avoiding storing coins of different metals side by side and in the same drawer, set the ideal environment condition when displaying or storing archaeological coins, periodic maintenance of the treated coins to check that no change changes have occurred. In case you are working on an ancient coins coinage conservation project, you will need at least this equipment and devices to get the work done. Here's some bibliography that you can use it to read more information about conservation of ancient coins. 
let's say there is there isn't a specific conservation cleaning strategy for all coins instead each coin is treated differently depending on its condition we will need multiple lectures to cover the topic of ancient coins conservation in depth and i will be delighted to give another lecture on conservation of ancient silver coins thank you so much for your attention and if you have any question, I will, be, I will be happy to answer them as much as I can. Thank you. Wonderful. That, that was really fantastic, um, uh, we, we certainly can entertain a couple of questions. I see that there was one from uh, Daniel Wolf, Wolf in the chat. Daniel, if you're with us, would you like to answer it or ask it, or would you like me to just read uh, it? Thank you, Peter. Yes, uh, as I noticed that uh, uh, the, our esteemed lecturer today reported specifically on a hoard of coins at the Getty Villa, with which I had some experience and uh, had been published in the well-known hoard of large Ptolemaic bronze coins. And I got a chance to go visit them and, and get a look at them myself in about 2014. And I was shocked to find that they were uh, beginning to suffer uh, from early to advanced bronze disease and mentioned it to a couple folks, including some ANS members. And I was hoping maybe uh, that hoard is now been taken care of. Uh, maybe they got to uh, fix it up, clean it up, and, re and remove reverse the bronze disease. So actually, as, I, as you mentioned, the Gadi Villa has amazing Ptolemaic coins. I was lucky to work on some of these coins, but unfortunately, I was in I was there in 2019, 2020 during the pandemic of COVID-19. So I spent about six months at the Giddy Villa on site and six virtually. So I had treated some of these coins especially the coins that suffering from bronze disease using silver oxide. I was planning to treat all of these coins, making uh, a good rehousing for these coins like others, because these coins actually, it, it, uh, housing inside like drawer, it's open, just the coins um, put it inside polyethylene bags and even these bags uh, open it. So there, there is air can go inside these bags and make this uh, bronze disease act active or con continue. So actually I, I made the recommendation for these coins before I leave for rehousing, for treating uh, bronze disease. I still in touch with uh, my supervisor, Maria uh, Svoboda. She is a conservator at the Giddy Villa Museum. And actually, I follow the condition of these coins. And actually, I will go in more details about these coins and what I did with them in uh, the numismatic, numismatic uh, congress in Poland uh, next uh, September. Uh, finger crossed. Yeah. yeah, lovely. I look forward to see. You. I look forward to see you there. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Um, I see. Uh, uh, there's a question here from uh, Peter Tompa as well. So, uh, Peter, do you want to ask or do you want me to? I could ask. Uh, thank All you right. very much. This has been a great uh, presentation. I actually had two quick questions. Uh, the first one is, I'm just curious if there's a typical type of corrosion that's found on the coins that are found in Egypt because of the soil conditions there. And then the second question is, we'll probably know the answer to it is, 
but um, are there far too many coins out there and you just can't clean them all? Uh, yeah, so the first one is a good question, actually. So the corrosion products, it's a different depends on the environment. So if you have coins excavated from Alexandria compared with coins excavated or discovered from Luxor in the south of Egypt. So you will find different corrosion products and here it depends on the media. So in Alexandria, you will have salts, active corrosion, and the corrosion products still to be continue. And in the condition of the coins discovered from Luxor, the weather or the condition there, it's very dry. So you will have just most of coins stable. You can actually find carbonates, copper carbonates, malachite in green corrosion uh, material, but in a stable condition. The second question, so we have uh, tons of coins, like millions, millions, millions of coins and we still discover everyday coins that need to be treated. So, yeah. Yeah, I was afraid that was the answer. But uh, I wonder if there's like some just general stabilization you could do on most coins. And then, you know, if you could get back to cleaning them better, uh, maybe that's the better way of doing it. If you can, I mean, if you have so many that uh, you have, I guess the first rule would probably would be to limit the further damage, right? If you can yeah, do that. I, agree. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. This has been great. And you're, you obviously know your stuff. So I'm very impressed. Thank you. Uh, Susan Sims, I see that you had a question here as well, too. It, um, she's asking, what are your thoughts on? Yes. First of, of all, I'd like to say hello. Um, right. Right. I, um, how are you doing? It's good to see well. you in person. Um, yeah, I just. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on copper, cleaning copper? So actually cleaning copper coins is the same when you are doing cleaning for bronze coins. So you will have the same corrosion products. Depends on the condition or the preservation condition that you have. So you will have copper oxide, you will have copper carbonates, you will have active corrosion, depends on the media. So the difference between copper coins and bronze coins is that you have more elements like tin and lead. So in the case of bronze coins, you will have the corrosion products of lead and tin. And these compounds actually need different treatments, but in general, you will not find it anymore because it's more stable more than the corrosion products of cover uh, cover coins yeah hope i answer your questions yes yeah thank you uh, good to chuck, see you yeah thank you yeah. chuck uh you. do you want to add, add, ask your question oh sure um outstanding presentation a absolutely wonderful uh I, I've had some success using uh, acetic acid uh, with distilled water in removing copper oxide on copper coins. I see that you mentioned uh, using citric acid. Uh, have you ever tried acetic acid? Yeah, I tried. Actually, I participated in full school 
in Karnak in 2016 with uh, Thomas Fouché. He's uh, an amazing numismatist. He actually, he's the one that I started to learn more information how on how we can conserve the ancient coins with his amazing teams. So we used it there. You have to start first with low concentration. As I mentioned in my presentation, you have to start with 3% and distilled water and localize. You can just put your coin. You, you, you don't have to merge your coins. So you yes. can just use cotton swab, make a localized cleaning for the location or the spots you don't you have to remove the corrosion product and start on the edge of the coins not on the obverse on the middle or the middle on the reverse so i have used it it's it's it gave it given a good results, but you have to make a rinsing to uh, to make the pH of the coin again to seven level uh, neutral. At the end, you have to make sure to make a drying for your coins to get off the whole water that you used it in the chemical uh, in the rinsing process. Well, once again, um, I, I want to thank you. I think that what you've done today has done more, so much more good. So many people are, have, are told uh, the horrors uh, of, of doing things, but your, your approach, of course, it's using a very sane approach. Little, little is better than bigger. Certainly not dropping the whole coin into a solution, just localizing it. This was a wonderful presentation. I thank you so much. Thank you, my beloved. Yeah, it, it really was. And I, I do have to uh, thank you again, Alma Wallet. And, um, and uh, I, I'm sure that we'll invite you back to talk about silver coin conservation because there just certainly does seem to be some interest in that as well. Thank you for watching the American Numismatic Society's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like our online resources, publication, and events, you can support the Society by becoming a member. And don't forget to check out our book and eBay stores. The links are below.